what the gods smell. Even today, in the Church of the Nativity, clouds of frankincense and myrrh rise up to the heavens. What more appropriate gift for the new Messiah? So the real story of the three kings forces us to change our idea of the nativity. Jesus wasn't born in an inn. It was the area of a house where animals were kept. The baby Jesus is still fine in the manger, but the three kings weren't there for the nativity. By the time they got to Bethlehem, Jesus wasn't a newborn. He was practically crawling. But the shepherds are okay. They were there. We also have to give up the idea that the nativity scene took place on December 25th. Jesus was probably born on April 17th. But I don't think we're about to change Christmas. So now it's time for the three kings to return home. But what to do about Herod's request to tell him the exact location of Jesus? The Bible tells us something very interesting happened now. And being warned of God in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed into their own country another way. Now it's interesting that this information came to the three kings in a dream because Persian magi were supposed to be able to do magic and interpret dreams. Our word magic comes from magi. Remember those pointy hats the magi wore? That's the origin of our wizard's hat from Merlin to Harry Potter. Dreams would have been right up the Three Kings Alley. Magi were famous in the ancient world for interpreting dreams. The Three Kings may have even had a dream book, one where if you had a dream, you could look it up and see what it meant. Now, I wish I had a Magi dream book to show you, but I don't, none have survived. But I've got an Egyptian one and I think it'll give us a good idea of what was involved. Let me show you how it worked. Let's say you had a dream about sailing in a boat. You'd look it up in this column. And here it is, sailing in a boat. Then you'd go to this column to see what it means. And it's good. It says, soon you'll be with your friends. Now, as Magi, the three kings were very skilled in dream interpretation. So when the dream came from God, they knew to listen to it, and they knew what it meant. The more clues we piece together about the three kings, the more the Bible story makes sense. Think about it. In the Bible, the three kings are guided by their knowledge of the heavens and dream interpretation. Just the skills we know the Magi were trained in. So thanks to the dream, the three kings returned home another way, without letting Herod know where Jesus was. The Bible tells us Herod slew all the children that were in Bethlehem from two years old and under. In an underground cave near the Church of the Nativity in Bethlehem, you can see bones purported to be those of the innocents slain by Herod. Now why include children up to the age of two? If the three kings had reached Jesus shortly after his birth, as we've all been taught to believe, there would be no need to kill children as old as two years every baby under six months of age would do. But Molnar's theory shows us that the three kings didn't reach Jesus until he was over eight months old. Besides, Herod didn't know exactly when he was born. So killing all two-year-olds was just the kind of ruthless behavior we might expect of him. It's a very moving place, but we really don't know how old these bones are. If you look closely at them, you can see that many are adults. The long bones and crania 
are far too large and developed for young children. So how did Jesus escape? Joseph and Mary, warned of Herod's savage plan, fled into Egypt. They might even have taken Jesus, who was a toddler by now, to visit the pyramids and Sphinx. To this day, pilgrims visit a tree near Cairo that they believe marks the spot where the Holy Family stopped to rest. And there's a story that backs this up. 30 years before Jesus was born, Egypt's Queen Cleopatra imported the famous trees of Gilead from Judea to this area of Cairo. It's likely that she also brought Judean gardeners to care for the trees. So 30 years later, when Mary, Joseph, and Jesus fled into Egypt, they ran to a community of their countrymen from Judea. A couple of years later, when Herod died, they returned home. And that's where the Bible ends the story of the three kings. They are never mentioned again. So where do we get all these ideas about them that aren't in the Bible? Come with me and I'll show you. I want to take you in search of the three kings. At least what people think they look like. When I was a kid growing up in the Bronx, they used to have fabulous Christmas lights in the Italian neighborhoods. And somebody always had a nativity scene. And that's what I want to find, a really great nativity scene. No, that's not it. Frosty the Snowman won't do. Uh, no, Santa Claus won't do either. Great lights, but just not a nativity scene yet. No, pretty, but no. Not yet, but this is the right neighborhood. We're gonna find something. Just stop for the stop sign, so I don't get killed here, looking for the three kings. That's nice. There it is. Let me just pull over. I think we've got our three wise men here. There it is. Come on. This is the kind of nativity scene I was looking for. You've got Joseph, you've got Mary and the infant Jesus, you've got the animals, and there are the three kings. And can you see what they have in their hands? They're bringing the three gifts, frankincense, myrrh, and gold. But look at their faces. One's dark, the other one has a ruddy complexion, and the third one's fair. Now that's not in the Bible. That's a later tradition that the three kings came from different continents. But that's how people started to look at the three kings, in a way very different from the Bible. Let's look at our 6th century Ravenna mosaic. You remember, where we saw the three kings with pointy hats and trousers? Look closely at their faces. One has a white beard. He's old. One has a black beard. He's middle-aged. And the young one has no beard at all. So as early as the 6th century, there was a tradition that the three kings were of different ages. There's another tradition, that they were buried together. And you know, they might just still be together, but in a place you'd never expect. The last stop on our Three Kings incredible journey is a place you would never guess in a million years, Cologne, Germany. And almost as amazing as their journey is the cathedral built to house their remains. See that? It's not the traditional cross. It's a star, the star the three kings followed. These walls protect what may be the holiest relics in all of Christendom, the bones of the three kings. Their remains have been here for more than eight centuries. This is one of the greatest medieval treasures in the world. There's nothing else like it. It's an incredibly powerful piece of religious art and dominates the cathedral. But what's inside might be even more incredible. 
See that panel on top? It's removable. And just behind it are the skulls of the three kings. But are they really the skulls of the three kings? The problem is that during the Middle Ages, hundreds of fake relics, supposedly from the time of Christ, were produced. An inventory of the relics in cathedrals in Europe should convince anyone that the chances of the bones being the three kings are slim. Paris has the crown of thorns from the crucifixion of Jesus. Rome has Jesus' umbilical cord. Aachen had his swaddling of baby clothes. Trier his coat. And Bruges, a capsule of his blood. And three separate towns in France alone claim to have the head of John the Baptist. But these are all medieval relics and appear only from the 8th century onwards. So if the bones in the cathedral are medieval, the chances are high that they're also fake. So can we prove that the bones of the three kings are earlier than the Middle Ages? The answer is yes. And the proof was painted on the wall of the cathedral in the 14th century. We want to see if the bones of the three kings are earlier than the Middle Ages. Here's a clue. See the lady with the crown? She's the Roman Emperor Constantine's mother, St. Helena. And the bones of the three kings are here because of Helena's incredible shopping spree. In the fourth century, Helena was buying relics associated with the life of Christ. Now, see that box? The bones of the three kings are inside. She bought the bodies of the three kings and brought them to her hometown, Constantinople. That's what's going on here. But Constantinople was just the first stop for the three kings. This painting shows the bones arriving in Cologne some 800 years ago. Now think about what the paintings on the wall tell us. The relics can't be medieval forgeries. We can trace the bones back through the centuries, from Cologne, and all the way back to St. Helena in the fourth century. But is there any other evidence that the bones are really ancient? I think so. Our next clue is the textile found wrapped around the bones of the three kings. See the two tiny purple fragments? The dye comes from Phoenicia. It's the right area, the Middle East. It's not made in Europe. And the weave is Syrian from the second or third century. Far too old for the usual medieval forgery. We are still in the ball game. We may just have the real thing. The cloth is neat, but my specialty is mummies, and I'd love to get my hands on the bones. But no one's been permitted to examine them in centuries. But I have plan B. I've got the only photo of the skulls behind the panel. At my university, CW Post, we have a great information technology department. It's a long shot, but let's see if we can tell anything from the photo. Hey, Trisha. How bad are you? Good. This is the disc. If you can pop it in and pull up the image, I'll show you what I need. Okay. I think it's pretty clear, so I think it'll, I think it'll work. Let's let me just show you. Okay, here's yeah. your image. Okay, now, what this is, this is the shrine, and in it are the bodies of the three kings, and what we're looking at is the back of the skulls. Now, what I'm interested in is just the skulls. Okay, just this area right here? Yeah, just the skulls. The crowns are good, too. How does yeah, that that would be perfect. Now, can okay. we see what, that's what it's going to look like? Okay. This is what it will look Ooh. like, craft. Yeah, that'd be great. Now, can we blow that up and get a really good image, or will it be fuzzy, grainy? Yeah, you've got an excellent quality picture here, so we'll be able to blow that up quite nicely. Um, oh, okay. So you want to go ahead and print yeah, this? Yeah, please, please, please. It's cutting it loose. That's it. Ooh, fabulous. 
This is our photo. It is 